Welcome back, Chad King, Virtual Noob, um, covering the VMware vSphere 5 Lab and a little bit of 4. Uh, right now we're going to cover setting up a domain controller, but first I wanted to take you back into the networking area. Not my favorite place. Anyways, so I like to have my management VMs, right? Management VMs being a uh, domain controller, things like antivirus, uh, backup software. Um, I like to refer to those as management because those are core infrastructure services that you kind of have to have. And I like, I like to separate networks and stuff because, you know, anyways, I can get more into that, but we'll talk about it later. But right now, I just want these on the NAT network. Um, which the, so that way I can access these, be able to get to them, um, and then of course they'll have two interfaces usually. Um, they'll have one interface that will be open facing or production as we'd call it, and then of course the other one is back into an OS management type stack to where they can access other machines and stuff through a back door. So it kind of lets your management a little less reduced because you don't have firewalls and things like that that you have to worry about. But as of right now, I just wanted to come in and verify that I do have NAT on VMNet 8, it appears. So we're going to go and say OK. And I wanted to confirm in my nice handy dandy documentation that my domain controllers are all going to be with a dot .10. So let's check the settings of one VM. I'm going to go back. I want to see the actual settings. Settings. NAT and NAT. Don't you love NATs? It's interesting that it just says NAT and doesn't actually give you a VM NAT connection. I guess it's probably because you only have one NAT connection. Interesting. So let's go out of uh, full screen mode. Yeah, that would seem it. That's interesting. Even in, um, yeah, even in, uh, huh, interesting. I must have missed that somewhere. I must have missed the, the point where it just calls it NAT and doesn't actually give it a VM net name. So uh, apologies for totally looking like a noob, but I mean, come on, right? If, if it wasn't a noob doing this, it wouldn't be any fun. So everyone can get a few laughs, right? Um, Anyway, so let's go ahead and go back to full screen. Now, the first thing you want to do on your domain controller is you want to give it a static IP. So I already know what my subnets are going to be. So I know that mine's a 192.168.4.10 is where I start on mine. So let's go over to the network. I'm going to configure this up real quick. So we're configuring the interface with the IP address of the actual machine and then the IP address of the actual gateway within VMware Workstation. So You'll see that the gateway and the DNS is the same. It doesn't state that when you're actually uh, looking in the virtual machine editor or virtual network editor. It only has the gateways, but they are the same. And then, of course, we want to give it the static IP, say OK, OK, and then we want it to apply. Then what we're going to do, because this, this machine here is cloned from a template, we want to go ahead and we want to rename it and reboot it. So I'm going to do that real quick. Too. I'm going to start, right-click computer, go to properties, and then we want to change our settings. The computer name that I'm going to use is going to be vmlab-w for Windows, dc for domain controller, 02 for site 2, and then A. And then we're going to just click apply. Oh no, this is computer description. Whoops. Yeah, we definitely yeah, definitely have a totally making noob mistakes today. It wouldn't be virtual noob if it wasn't. Obviously we have to restart for that little bitty change to go in. And then when it comes up we'll start our domain controller. So on the server manager initial configuration we want to go to add role and then we want to add active directory domain services and yes we want to add these required features as well. Um, some will go in and they'll add features and they'll do these things to their templates for specific things. I you know there's no point in, in pre-installing it if you're not going to use it on everything so I just assume keep it simple you know. 
I'm going to go next, next again, or install. We'll let this go through. Holy moly, our installation succeeded. Uh, I think I was a little bit concerned there. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And do I have to do anything else? Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I probably should run DC promo, huh? Darn it. Looky there. Oh, wow. Man, this is like a noob-filled day for me. I didn't know you could just go in and, like, click stuff. That's amazing. And since today is such a noob-filled day, I most certainly don't want to use advanced mode installation for the sake I may make myself look even more noobish. So I'll just click the wonderful next button. Next. Uh. By the way, I'm not a Microsoft expert. Next. <gasps> Oh, wow. Excuse me. Can't even click the next button without problems. Yeah, VM Lab. Let's keep this simple. Dot local. Oh, the next button's actually working. Uh, force functional level, I just go 08 because I'm not going to be using any other domain controllers. And then, of course, when DNS um, comes up, we'll want to configure DNS for our proper subnets so that way uh, we can have DNS routing internally working correctly. And what we'll be doing is that we'll be using the AD DNS server as our primary DNS, and then we'll be using the VMware workstation as a secondary DNS. And then to allow for good routing on our actual VMware workstation host, we'll go ahead and we'll set up the secondary DNS as this Active Directory controller. So that way we can get internally routing to our uh, VMs and stuff without any issues. I mean, sometimes it works great, sometimes it don't. I just rather play it safe than sorry. Of course, anytime you're setting up Active Directory, you want to make sure you're using a template, a clone that's been sysprepped. Using not having a unique SID for your Active Directory domain controller will result in authentication issues out the wazoo. Yes, it took a noob to learn that. You'd be surprised how many people still continue to make that mistake. The next button, thus thou worketh. Ah, yeah, I just disabled that interface um, merely because it causes a problem. You get a little pop-up about DNS. Um, I have a two NICs, and that's why you get that pop-up. One NIC I just didn't put to uh, static. And I've actually been through this a couple of times, and that usually gets me every time. Um, it's not really important to have these separately. Um, Restore password is important. If AD is ever down, you need to be able to pull this out of your password stash from three years ago because that's usually what happens is no one on earth remembers the AD restored password account and you end up, you know, having to get a little unethical hacking going on. DNS is kicked off and it's going. Still going. Oh, so much for the next buttons. That took a little bit under 10 minutes. Yes, restart now. For a nested lab setup, that was pretty fast. Um, I'm using server hardware with uh, fiber channel storage. And so that concludes our AD domain controller installation. 
Um, the next session I'm going to add a secondary domain controller and then we're going to test joining VMs to the domain. Thanks and have a wonderful day.